Hi everybody, Simon Pimenta here. I'm going to talk very briefly on this topic about being relaxed about what other people think and I'll talk about it because it's come up quite a lot this week with clients. So be really interesting to get your take on that. What are some situations where you aren't so relaxed about what other people think so Claire's saying she can see and hear so yeah what is your relationship to this where is it that you don't feel relaxed about what others think I know when I had MECFS definitely kind of worried about what other people thought I worried that people thought I was swinging the lead maybe they thought I was just being lazy or, or it was all in my head what about you so Lynn saying same Claire saying yeah I worried if people believe me or think I'm lazy yeah okay so let's talk very briefly about why it's really important to let go of that worry about what other people think and to become more relaxed about what other people think first reason is it's exhausting and if we're worrying what other people think then there's probability that we also have that kind of people pleaser tendency Becky's saying good morning from Oxnard Beach, California. Um, so Paul's saying no longer a problem. My thoughts are worse than others. OK, uh, so that's that's another topic um, to address. But yeah, do feel free to share your thoughts on that. Where do you worry about what other people think? Um, so the first reason why we I think we need to shift it is because it is exhausting. And if we're doing that stuff, then it means we're also activating the fight or flight mechanism and it can become a habit. You know, in, in the previous Facebook lives in the last few weeks, I've I've uh, released some videos talking about neuroplasticity. And one of the core concepts there is that whatever we practice, we get good at. OK, so if we practice worrying what other thing, what, about what other people will think, then we'll get better at that. Can be a sign of low self-esteem. Because I think people with high self-esteem and high self-confidence are more assured in their own views. OK, and. If we are doing that, if we are worrying about what other people think, then it kind of means that we're putting all our focus on the other person rather than the focus on ourselves. OK, so what we need to do is break the pattern. OK, so let's talk very briefly about how we do that. And I'm going to give you a framework, which is a framework I use when I'm working with clients. Um, but I invite you to think about this framework and think about how you can utilize it. So the first step in the framework is to identify, identifying when we're doing that behavior, worrying about what other people think. Now, some of the stuff you might be aware of, but what's very clear to me is that some of the stuff we're doing is unconscious. We're not always aware when we're activating a response, for instance, worrying about what other people think, sometimes it's unconscious. We're doing things without realizing that the reason we're doing it is because it's being driven by what other people think. OK. So I want you to think about that. When do you notice you're doing that pattern? What are some situations where you've done that? One simple strategy for getting more clear on those times where it's not been so conscious is that perhaps after the event you might realize oh actually I think in that situation my behavior was driven by worrying what people think so an example of that for me is I can remember when I had ME CFS and I'd be in a family situation and I would be thinking oh I think I need to rest now but uh, I think people will think I'm a bit lame if I go and rest now. And actually it didn't matter. It probably didn't matter to them whether I rested now or rested in 10 minutes or half an hour. 
if they thought I was lame, they'd probably think I was a bit lame if I did it in half an hour. So it didn't make any difference, actually. And they might not even have thought that. OK, so but that was one example of where I was adjusting my behavior based on what I thought people might think. So that's kind of mind reading. And it was only after the event that I thought, oh, actually, that's what I was doing. Um, and so a strategy for that might be, well, OK, if that situation arises again, what might I do differently next time? And I might practice that in my mind. And one of the things I get clients to do is to, if there's a behavioural change they want to make, is to commit to doing that visualisation every day for 30 days and then see where you are with it in 30 days. So that's one little strategy, OK? So we identify when we're doing that behaviour. The second is to interrupt that behaviour. And so I've just given you an example of that by, well, one way of interrupting is to use visualization seeing yourself doing it differently and the third step is to create those new responses and firstly by practicing the visualization that can make it more likely that when we're faced with that kind of situation again that that new response pops into our head oh actually i'll do this response because we've mentally practiced it. I gave an, a little example of you know how behaviors can become habitualized a couple of weeks ago. And actually Lynn's saying I can't see the words. You should be able to see my uh, slides at the moment. Let me know if you can see my slides at the moment. It's a slide with the words identify, in, identify interrupt and create. Can other people see that? Just let me know. So, yeah, an example I, I gave of, you know, kind of habitual pattern is when I was working in the city and I would arrive at, arrive at the office and I had to plug the key code in. And the code was, let's say, 1066. Then one day it was changed to 1666. But I kept doing that old pattern. But after a while, I caught myself. Oh, actually, no, I was just about to type in 1066. And now the code is 1666. OK. OK, Lynn, you're saying that the letters are too small. I'm wondering what device you're looking at. If you're watching on your phone, then they probably will be too small. Um, it's better if you can watch on a laptop. Um, so the third step is about creating new responses. And, and when I'm working with people, we work on the way we talk to ourselves. I teach people how to be a great coach to themselves, work on self-esteem, our relationship to ourselves. So I want to just give you three little ways of thinking about this. Let's go back. Um, and this is a little exercise we can do right now. OK, what's the significance of this logo? I'm sure everyone knows what it is, but I'll give you a moment just to guess. And I've got a little exercise that I want you to do right now, which is I want you to think of your one of your favourite tunes or a tune that you really like. Play close. It's actually a, a logo for a company. Um, Becky got it right. It's YouTube. So this is what I want you to do right now, OK? I want you to go to YouTube and search for a song that you really like. And I want you to make a note of roughly how many likes that video has got and how many thumbs down that video has got. And I want you to come back and post your answers in the chat. The name of the song, the number of thumbs up, and the numbers of thumbs down. So I'm going to give you a minute to do that right now. OK. And maybe I'll do it as well. So if you're not sure what the exercise is, I want you to go to YouTube. I want you to type in one of your favourite songs. And I want you to clock what number of people have given that song the thumbs up. What number of people have given that song 
a thumbs down. And I want you to put your answers in the chat. Okay. And what's the song, Claire? Okay, and I will do the same. Okay, I can only see Claire's answer right now and my answer. But so Claire's okay, Karen's saying fifty-nine thousand and two thousand down. Shine by take that. Uh, message in the bottle, police, Claire's saying. Uh, and mine was the Beatles. Um which has actually uh this there's one version has had eight million views. Okay, actually and um the one I looked at had 20,000 thumbs up. One of them's got 63,000 thumbs up and 1.6 thousand thumbs down. And Lynn saying Invictus Choir 1.9k and 35 thumbs down. So isn't that interesting? You know, that's a song that you really like. OK, and um, loads of people like love that song okay but there are always going to be some people who don't like the song so that's the first point is that it doesn't matter how brilliant someone is you know personally there i think you know the beatles were a fantastic band uh police fantastic band i don't really know invictus choir uh that well i have heard one track um oh shine by take that you know they, they've done some great songs but there are always going to be some people who don't like them now, do you think Gary Barlow and Sting um, and all the other Take That fans or whatever, Take That band members, did they go to bed crying into their pillow at night because some people gave them thumbs down? Probably not. OK, I remember one um, entrepreneur saying that doesn't matter how brilliant you are, doesn't matter how great a job you do, there are always going to be people who don't like you or don't like what you do and you know we'll give you the thumbs down okay so that's the first reason why it's really important that we have to be more relaxed about what other people think uh for me the other reason oh, so, so becky's saying return of the mac uh, which is mark morrison i think who i saw on clapham common many years ago wearing a um, fur coat on a boiling hot sunny day okay so Lynn's saying that's right they do not care there's people those people do not care about the thumbs down all right so that's the first reason I really want you to remind you yourself anytime you think about what people are thinking just remember that whatever you do there is going to be someone who gives you the thumbs down all right so second thing you know, this is a personal um, experience of mine. OK, so when I was young, I my town was twinned with a town in the Netherlands and we went on an exchange. So we went to the Netherlands. My friend and I stayed with this family. And when we first, this chap came and picked us up and when I first met him, I thought, Oh, he looks a bit square, you know, me being very judgmental. And but I very quickly learned that he was a really lovely guy. And he, he we went to stay with his wife and two young children. And they were a really lovely, lovely family. 
And I remember one night, uh, the seven year old girl decided that she wanted to be a dog um, and she wanted her food in a bowl on the floor. And her dad, with a very straight face, said, I want you to go upstairs and think about whether you want to be a dog or whether you want to be a human. And when you've decided, come downstairs and um, let me know. She was a bit upset because she was missing all the fun. And she came down and said, I want to be a human. Um, and actually, I remember on the last night, we had a lovely night, but I remember writing them a letter afterwards saying, oh, I wonder if I said something that upset you. And that was something I constantly, not constantly, but I did a lot. I think, oh, did I upset someone? Have I upset so-and-so? And this chap, Hank, he wrote back to me and said, Simon, I, I don't know what you're talking about. We had a lovely time. It was really lovely meeting you and Alan. And I did stay in touch with them for a while, but after a while, because I wasn't very good at keeping in touch with people, I lost contact. But my friend Alan stayed in contact with them for a number of years. Um, and one, uh, about three or four years after that trip, um, Alan got in touch with me. I said, I don't know if you heard this, but very sadly, Henk was killed in a car crash. And he was one of the nicest, nicest men. And, and it really kind of stopped me in my, my tracks. And I remembered that time where I'd been worrying that I'd upset him. And I can't even, you know, recall what I thought I'd done. OK. And it really occurred to me that life is short. And, you know, those experiences, that experience of spending that weekend with that family was a really, really special time. And it, it really made me realise that I have to stop spoiling experiences, if you like, by doing that kind of thinking. All right. Uh, and the third thing, the third little pointer, um, let's just choose the right slides, is this slide. Now, I know some people who are clients will know what this means, but any guesses, if you haven't seen this before, or if I haven't showed it to you before, any guesses what the significance of those letters are? I know, um, as I say, I know there's a few people on this call who might know. Lynn saying, oh, that is sad. Simon. It is sad, but, it, you know, I know, Lynn, that if Hank was around, he would be saying to me, Simon, you've got to enjoy your life. OK, life is short. OK. And certainly when I was younger, I spent too much time worrying about things, working myself about up about things that actually weren't important. Yeah, Karen saying you meet others. That's you're on the right track. So there's three kinds of business. OK. There's your business, there's my business, and there is other business. Some people call it God's business if you're religious, but if you're not, that's fine. But it's the stuff that is not um, stuff that is in your control or my control. Um, so if someone, if let's say when I had MECFS, then... One of the things I found really difficult was having to let people down. It really, I would generate a lot of frustration. But using this kind of formula, what I started to realise is, look, you know, if someone's disappointed, annoyed with me, then that's their business. OK. And if I've made the decision that I can't meet today, then it's really my business now to be thinking about what I'm doing in my head. If I spend the whole time thinking, oh, I should have gone, oh, I feel so stupid. And then actually I'm just wasting a lot of energy that I could be using to help restore my energy. OK, if I'm I talk about this concept of the energy bucket. OK, imagine you've got an energy bucket and there are things that you can do that will deplete that energy. There are things you can do that will boost the energy in the bucket. I'll talk more about that in a Facebook Live uh, that I'm planning to do next week on baselines. OK, but I find this little structure really useful to think about. Is this my business or is it their business? If they're disappointed, upset, that's their business. Maybe they can say to me, I'm disappointed that 
we couldn't meet. I'm annoyed we couldn't meet. I'll say, okay, I can understand that. Um, sorry about that, but it couldn't be helped. Okay, so we've got to remember that we're not responsible for other people's happiness. Okay, and that is a practice, if you like. So that might be one of the things I do. So I remember I talked about this formula. Identify, interrupt and create new responses. I might remind myself that, you know, it doesn't matter how brilliant you are. There are people on YouTube who are going to give you the thumbs down. So that might be one way of interrupting that unhelpful, you know, behaviour. Another way I might remember to interrupt that pattern is to remind myself that there are three kinds of business. Your business, my business, other business. OK, so let's just have a look. Um, Becky says, yes, more oatmeal. You'd have to explain that because that does that mean more of the good stuff? Uh, is that the significance of that? Um, so Lynn's saying, I want to enjoy my life away from here. OK, what that means, Lynn, is your deferring enjoyment of life. And people do that a lot. They say, I can't enjoy myself until X happens. It might be I can't enjoy my life until I've got the perfect job or the perfect husband, the perfect wife. Um, perfect car the perfect home and I know it can be challenging when things aren't exactly as the way we want it but the challenge is to find enjoyment in life now okay because remember the story I've just told you you know this chap Hank his his you know he lost his life but he did enjoy life every moment okay uh, or, you know, he was he was very much a person who embraced life in a positive way. But he's saying, yes, feeling cheeky, cheeky this morning. All right. So I want to just get you to think about what is one little takeaway from this brief conversation today? Great. So Lynn's saying, I'm, I love my kids. I'm grateful for life. That's Well, that's great. Each week I offer three free strategy sessions. There's no need to be a client. One per person. If you'd like one, pop the word strategy below this video if you're watching on Facebook. If you're watching on YouTube, fill in the contact details and put the word strategy in the subject line. So Claire's saying, I think I'll do some visualizations. Visualization is powerful. We do visualization a lot of the time, but sometimes our visualizations aren't very helpful. All right, so let's finish with a relaxation. <laughs> 